Hi fellows, welcome back. I have been uh, in England for one week, so I couldn't release any videos and I couldn't prepare any videos last week. And I realized a while ago, I released my old webinar for my course, Friends 10 Habits for Speed Drawing, which a lot of you liked, it's getting a lot of attention. So I thought, why not use the rest of that old webinar, which is jam-packed with value, and that includes my 10 tips for SOLIDWORKS beginners. So I am just letting you know that this is part of my old webinar, that I had on my website for the course, and I hope you like it. Number one, analyze your model. Finishing your model is not the goal. How to finish it should be your number one priority. Get that right from the beginning and you're set to take the shorter path to becoming a professional and creating efficient models. The solution to that is creating a mind map of where you're going. This is a technique I always use when I'm tasked with a model. I imagine the end results and break down its three main features. Take this space mouse for example. If I were to model this, I would look for the three main features I see in this model. In this case, I see the base, I see the knob, and I see the shiny cap on the knob. Next step is to prioritize these three steps and decide the tools that could help you create such geometries and execute them. After that, you go for details. Some of the details in this case are the ribs on the knobs, the buttons, rounded edges, and some more. This flowchart sums this tip up best. This will come to you more naturally as you learn more tools and practice. Tip number two, ABCs of steps. The most common mistakes beginners make is they naturally assume just because they're clicking on a certain point on the model, they can draw on that point, but in reality, nothing is further from the truth. Before you reach the professional level and grasp an understanding of how to work with 3D sketches, anything before that is considered a 2D sketch. And just like in real life that you need a paper to draw on, you need to have a plane to draw your 2D sketch. That is why you always define which plane it is that you want to draw on, then you start drawing. If you're going to take away anything from this training as a beginner, it is this. The golden sequence to model in SOLIDWORKS that could separate you from the crowd of beginners who have and will fall victim to this unpleasant error is this. Select a plane, activate sketch, draw your sketch, rebuild it, use a feature on top of your sketch. You follow this sequence and you will save yourself weeks of headaches. In fact, I would write it down on a post-it and stick it next to my monitor if I were you. Tip number three, how to draw efficiently and fast. Tip number four, rotation of your part. I have seen many beginners working with view selector, which is this orientation cube that allows you to rotate the camera and look at your part from a different angle. This is not bad, but deactivate it. It is activated on default on many licenses. Press spacebar on the keyboard and deactivate it here. Instead, I'm going to give you a better alternative and then compare the time you need to rotate your camera between the methods. Holding shift and working with the arrows on the keyboard will grab you access to different camera angles at a much faster pace. Each time you shift arrow, you rotate your model 90 degrees to the direction of the arrow. Pressing the arrow itself without shift is a rotation at 15 degrees. While both are customizable, they are still a better habit to build than working with a view selector. Let's compare them now. First, the view selector. Every time I press the spacebar, I must wait half a second or so until the whole thing would fill the screen, then I can click to rotate it 90 degrees. But in the other method I recommended, you you can rotate your angle super fast without waiting seconds between each rotation. Tip number five, rolling back line and dragging a feature in the design tree. This design tree here is designed to log everything you do in a chronological order. Anything that is on the higher level is added first and anything that is lower is added next. When editing a feature, anything that is added after that will be temporarily suppressed. Meaning you don't see them at the point of editing until you will be finished and therefore you cannot use them as a reference when editing the earlier ones. It is like going back in time to tell your parents something in their young hood, but you cannot ask your siblings for help because at that point when your parents were young, you didn't have any siblings yet. So if you wanna take your siblings with you, or in this case, if you want to have the later added features, you're going to drag them up in the tree, either by literally dragging them with your mouse or roll back this line up above the feature you want to edit and then add the new features, then roll it down again. The caveat in this method is, if the feature you want to move up is dependent on one of the features above it, moving is not possible. Whenever a feature is dependent on another, like in this case, this fillet, 
could not have existed if there was no cube to round its edges in the first place. So the fillet is the child and the extruded bus here is the parent feature. You cannot drag a child feature above its parent feature. Tip number six, starting point of extrusion. Every time I get a project from a pro user and see their model is filled with so many unnecessary custom planes, it drives me nuts. This is a tip which beginners can also benefit from, but this is mainly addressed to upper intermediates and those who are becoming professionals in SOLIDWORKS. During your course of modeling in SOLIDWORKS, there are many cases in which you must create a new customized plane, sure, to perform your extrusion from that level. But knowing how to work with the from section of your extrusion property manager not only would save you minutes at a time, but it increases your credibility if you are modeling for a supervisor as it shows the depth of your knowledge in the software. When your sketch is set on this surface and you want to set an offset between the start of your extrusion and the sketch plane where your sketch is located on, instead of creating a new plane here, use convert entities to duplicate the sketch and start your extrusion from that point, use the from section here, set it to offset and assign the offset value you need. Your extrusion will skip this distance and starts from here. You can also do it backwards if you move it further enough to flip your direction and you can cut it from the other side. Tip number seven, dimensions between circles. Something even long time professionals dabble on. If you have ever tried to set the max or min dimension between your two circles, you know using a smart dimension is to no avail because it would only give you the center to center distance. Most users place points on the circumference of the circles and assign a dimension to those points. The faster and more efficient way of course would be to hold shift on your keyboard while selecting those circles. This way, depending on where you click on the circle, you can assign the min or max or even the start to end dimension between them. Tip number eight, splines. One of the most useful and unique tools when it comes to sketching. Perfect for pro surface modeling, but probably the most tricky and difficult one to a point where despite these many advantages, even long time users try to go around it because they cannot get the hang of it. Spline is a flexible line that you can manipulate and bring to the geometry that you desire. You can create a spline by defining a minimum of two and maximum of as many as you want points. But the ideal spline has and should have only three points. This is not a law and certainly there are cases where you need more points. But if you master the two and three point spline, you can work with a hundred point spline. The two point spline has a two end points and on default looks straight, but you can manipulate it simply left clicking on it until these two gray vectors appear. You can drag each of these vectors either from their neck, their spear or their tip. If I drag it from here, I can only rotate the vector and you see the effect it has on the spline. Dragging it from here would only allow me to extend or shorten the magnitude of the vector while dragging it from the tip will allow me to manipulate the vectors in direction and length at the same time. Same goes for the other one. Three point spline is no different. However, you have more inflection points. Tip number nine, dragging chamfers. You can drag and replicate a chamfer whenever it makes sense by holding control and dragging an existing chamfered edge onto another edge. This is a pro tip and beginners shouldn't make themselves overwhelmed with this technique at this stage. Tip number 10, mating your components in the assembly mode could be done much faster if you hold alt key on your keyboard or your space mouse if you use any and drag your first component from the entity you want to mate onto the second entity on your second component. SOLIDWORKS does the rest for you. If you want to make these two components concentric on their circular surface here, instead of going to mate, select the two surfaces and making them concentric, hold alt, drag the first one from its circular surface and drop it on the other circular surface. Same results achieved in a much shorter time. There you go guys, that wraps up my 10 strategies that will help you model more efficient and in a shorter time in SOLIDWORKS. If you enjoyed this training and would like to learn more beyond just these 10 secrets and strategies, we recently pre-launched our full SOLIDWORKS course called SOLIDWORKS Course Pro, which takes you from absolute beginners and help you pass the CSWA and the CSWP official SOLIDWORKS examinations. We have over 50 video tutorials ready, totaling over 10 hours of content in pre-launch level, and it's all jam-packed with value just like this training. At this moment, we are adding one to two videos per week to finish around 100 videos of tutorial lessons for the full launch. These videos will also include in the certification section for both CSWA, which is a certificate issued by 
SOLIDWORKS as well as CSWP which officially certifies you as a SOLIDWORKS professional. These certificates are invaluable and you can proudly put it in your CV when landing a job or a big client when you're doing freelance work. So there you have it folks. This is all I wanted to share with you today and I hope you took away a thing or two. Remember the offer is a limited time deal so join now before it is too late and elevate your SOLIDWORKS skills to a whole new level.